All right, we're going to look at using the lag function to compare the previous and current rows. So here's a scenario that you may face or in an interview uh, where you need to take the difference between the previous and the current row. So our scenario is our marketing team wants to know which months do we have the most churn and growth. So there's a couple steps that we need to take, but first let's take a look at the data. So we can just make a simple query and we can select everything from our customer underscore total table. And if I run that, you can see we have the date and the customers here. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. But now we want to obtain the difference between the current and previous rows. So this is a current row. So if I just copy this query, this base query, and, and paste it, I still want to use that wildcard because it's just easy. And then I'm going to create another row using the lag function. So what we want to do is use the lag function. So LAG. And what do we want to lag? We want to take this column and lag. So we're going to use customers. And then by default, you're going to have a lag of one. But we can add another argument like two or three. And then we want to include the date here. We just don't want to just bring this in without the date. So in order to bring in the date, we use over. And then we want to keep that order here because it's in um, consecutive order. So we're going to order by, and then we're going to use that date column. And then let's name this our previous row. So if I run this particular query, execute it, now you can see that this row has been shifted down. So this is a current row and this is a previous row. So if we can take the difference between each one of these observational rows. So let's create another column and then let's use our current row, which is just customers and subtract that previous row and we're just going to take this lag function copy it and subtract and then name our column the difference and if we run this you can see that we get the difference between the current and previous row at each one so we can see how many customers we gained or churn during each one of these months. So let's take another step and create another column and get the string name of the month because it'll just be um, nicer and we just want to group by the month which is the end uh, result that we're looking for. So let's create the month. So we can do that with format because we already have a date column and I want to format the date column and I want it to bring back a string so I'm using the format function passing in this string format and calling it our month underscore name so now we have a month name if I highlight this and run it looks like we have a error somewhere Oh, I just forgot a comma there. So I'm going to now run this. And now we have the month name. Now we have our base query, which we can use. So let's just copy this, go down here, and let's group by that month name. So I'm going to select the month name and I'm going to also get the difference 
from this query. So let's encapsulate that query. And we can call it query. So if I just choose this, we're going to have to aggregate by the name because there's two months. So we're going to have to use a group by. So we just don't want to bring back the difference. We want to bring back the average and the total change, as you see indicated here. So let's use AVG for our difference. And we can call that average uh, distance, average, uh, average change. And then we can copy this again and we can use that in our sum and we can change this to total change and then we need to make sure that we have a from statement here and now we can see everything looks pretty good so we're just going to be bringing back the month the average total we also know that we're using an aggregation here so we need to add a group by and we're going to group by the month name. So let's run this query. And now you see we have the month name, the average and the sum. So let's pull that up so we can see everything. And then I am going to order by, so let's order by 2 and 1, which would indicate this column and this column. Order by 2 and 1. And if I run this query again, and I execute it, now we can see that it's or we can see the months that had the most churn as at the top and the mo most gross at the bottom. I hope that helps. Please ask any questions, leave a like, or subscribe if you found this useful.